and him, Tim Patton. Today we discuss, is anarchism right wing? Tim. There is a movement to say that right and left are meaningless. I think Nick Land is correct in that right slash left is the prime political division and it's not going away. It's been a term that's been used for a long time and it's not going to, it's the Lindy effect, it's just going to be used here. Maybe there's a particular genealogical history based on the French Revolution and stuff that you can obscure or weaken the claim that the right slash left axis is, 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 is false or, or unuseful. Um, you know, but, but to me, it's like saying South is, it is South is a bad measurement because if you get to Antarctica, it's, it ceases to be useful. So like, yes, you can say that the Nazis are left wing. Yes. You could try to argue that the Stalinists are actually right wing. Yes. You know, Peter Hitchens and Noam Chomsky end up trying to do this. Um, but in both instances, you know, the pass me the sandwich kind of like, which takes Wittgenstein's theory of language which existential comics boils this down to a very short way to think about this. Like, you know, if, if someone's just passing me a sandwich and there's a hot dog on there and no one passes the sandwich, this is a way to test. Is it, you know, is it, is, is the word useful and usable here? Uh, so there might be a kind of private language where private technical language, which actually has no meaning on this, but by normal usage of the words, People know what right and left wing works, even though if you can't cash out all the interests. So this comes to the question of anarchism. What will anarchism, or also known as abolishing the state, bring about? Or what will it likely bring about? So in my argument, most scenarios, which by standard views, are right wing. Um, so this is my argument, roughly. Anarchism will abolish the progressive technocratic managerial state state not the ancien regime of the French Revolution. Um, the Maybe the entrepreneurial state author, uh, maybe if you abolish the managerial state, we'll just abolish technology. So this is where, like the Ted Kaczynski point here. Like, like maybe also the un- entrepreneurial state, people are right. This is Ben Burgess's favorite guy, um, which is interesting because the entrepreneurial state, people say a lot of technology the state creates is military technology, which gets passed on to you know, like, you know, guidance, computers, radar screens, and those things are all get passed on. And they have to sort of be repurposed for, like, civilian use. Um, the the only environmentalism which makes any sense is the kind of Kaczynski argument. We've done an episode on, are there too many people? Does the left, does the environmentalists think there's too many people? Um, you know, there's no way 9 billion people are going to live in cabins, eating, eating, like, you know, the only way that this happens is actually, ironically, a hyper-technological society to make this work here with lots of energy use here. So, again, Alex Epstein as well as Matt Ridley would disagree. Moral case for fossil fuels, uh, rational optimist. But on a practical level, I think that is just the way it is with environmentalism here. So maybe if you abolish the technocratic managerial state, you just have no technology. Large people will die. This, this sort of leads to this sort of primitive anarchist type view of the anarcho-primitivism. Um, but if you look at the societies before the Industrial Revolution, you know, if you wanted to have replaceable birth rates, you just had to have women pregnant a long per- a lot of period of time. If you had to have at least six to ten children, maybe five to seven. Um, if you look at families with more children, they're more more quote unquote trad. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna have one to two children and have them survive in a pre industrial environment. Um, yes, there's arguments about like, you know, chemicals and things like that. But in general, I think the technologicalists, if that's a word, are right in that it has like improved lifespans and particularly for the the young, which which leads to like, you know, having women be pregnant just is like a reminder of the differences here. You know, you're not going to be you're not going to be an Israeli Air Force pilot as well. You know, like you just there's just things you can't do as well. Um, um, otherwise, why would women want paternity leave also? I mean, that, that would be the question here. So now on the other hand, if technology doesn't get abolished, um, uh, then I think there are roughly three types of size that could exist. Um, individualist, corporate, and of course, some sort of hybrid. So maybe you could say there's two of a hybrid. Um, corporate, we have Rick Story on a number of times. Rick Story is a corporateist. Uh, in the modern parlance, corporations, are mean something like Walmart, for example. So I think megacorps or moderate-sized corps might dominate in Kapistan. 
or an anarchist society. I mean, this is this is like Keith Preston's fear of the no particular order anarchism. So if you get rid of the state, who's going to dominate the current existing West? Who's going to dominate the current existing Japan and China? It's the megacorps here. Again, this is what this is what Preston and people like Kevin Carson fear about like the right-wing anarchism. But this goes back to our episode we did with him on whether a society without elites can exist. You know, like, if you make fun of many students and many people as being dumb sheeple, you know, now you could blame some of that on the education system. But if you blame that on their parents, this goes back to my first paragraph argument here. Why are there so many single parent children and so forth? I think, I think the only real answer is the welfare state and various policies that are very industrial here. Um, but for going back to corporations, like we've had an episode on whether megacorps will dominate. Yes, there are legal means from which they do dominate. Uh, IP, blah, blah, blah. You can list them. But I don't think, I don't think the only reason Elon Musk is successful is because, you know, he gets aid from the government. I think he wouldn't be an unsuccessful. Person. Same with Bill Gates, same with Jeff Bezos. Watch a in four hour interview with them. They're, they're very smart guys. You may not agree with them. They may get. They might be corporate welfare whores, but they're not idiots here. So I do think this comes to like the question in itself. And um, so so then the other type of society have is more like a, you know, uh, individualistic or mutualistic society here. And so the question is: Are co-ops, um, uh, are co-ops, uh, right wing or left wing? I think by the I think if you look at functional co-ops, and this is what Mises would call workers' capitalism, they're somewhat left wing. Uh, I'm sorry, they're somewhat right wing. They're somewhat right wing. I mean the fun the ones that function. You know, I think it's I there was a, there was a socialist turned capitalist who lived in a kibbutz in Israel, and he said when he reached the kibbutz, he was surprised that they locked the cupboards in them, um, so people wouldn't take the stuff from them. I mean, this is like this is like a like a deep sociological point here here. And if you look at groups like the Amish and the Hutterites, um, they do they do they're they're like religious fundamentalists in a way which could be construed as left wing by like people like Moldbug. And at times I agree with them, but in functionality, they're right wing here. You know. So again, if you abolish the modern managerial state, who do you rely on? Who do women rely on? Who do children rely on? And you know, then you have to answer these questions here. And as far as unions are concerned, it's worth pointing out that unions before, like, the 1980s were sausage fests. People like Chris Cotrone and Caleb Mountain, whether or not they explicitly point this out, um, they will, like, they, they, as much as people complain about um, that, well, actually, the right should actually then complain about that. Sure. But if you look at, like, labor unions in Britain and the United States, uh, this is like a male breadwinner show here. I mean, and actually, the feminists, if you read their writings, some of them are critical of labor unions for this very reason. Um, so, so I'm gonna stop there and let you respond to this. I've let, laid out two types of like some types of societies. It's so, well, like well, what the question of technology, what will its absence be? People are not abolishing the French aristocracy of the 1800s anymore. We're abolishing the modern managerial state. If you get rid of that, what will be the likely outcome based on the normal usage of words? I would say it's quote unquote right wing or trad by the normal usage of words. With it, do you agree? Do you disagree? What would be some points about this argument. I think you're right to highlight um, our previous episode on whether society, uh, society can exist without elites. Um, to the extent they can, then maybe, maybe abolishing the state could uh, lead to sort of like a leftist uh, outcome. Um, but as you've pointed out, if you look at any pre sort of industrial societies, uh, to the extent that they were actually sort of socially leftist is, uh, is deeply um, rare. Um, I suppose the closest thing you could get was some obscure polyandrous tribes in which one woman would have multiple husbands. Um, but they're very rare, and from memory, they only took place in societies where there was astonishingly scarce resources, and so they wanted to try to keep the population down. Um, that would probably be the closest, but I imagine if you looked 
um, if you look close at that, I still wouldn't be surprised. Well, I'd be surprised if it wasn't patriarchal. Uh, even if you had multiple husbands, I imagine there would have been elders who would have been male. Um, so that so whilst there may be some uh, elements of socially leftist um, societies prior to the Industrial Revolution, uh, they're scant and it does seem to be the, the natural pressure, selection pressure of reality gets rid of them. Uh, and as you point out about population replacements and things, maybe the societies that were culturally leftist could exist for a short period of time, but there's something going to last for very long um, because if it's the case that technology disappears because their children will die uh, and they will die off. And so I think you're right uh, for that. Uh, the hope for the leftist society is that they can keep technology going um, and maybe be able to continue a similar trajectory as we have today. Um, again, I suppose that's to some extent possible, um, but without welfare, that seems to be unlikely because as you point out, where are the women going to get resources from? I mean, they could all work maybe, um, uh, but I mean, effectively to have the leftist society with abolishing the state, you would need to somehow create non-state institutions that would inculcate society with values which align with current legislation on things like anti-discrimination, etc. Maybe as well would give, oh, any woman who happens to have a, a child gets given some sort of um, welfare money. So effectively, what you would need to do is to sort of reconstitute um, the welfare state on sort of voluntary lines, which again seems deeply unlikely because why would anybody put money in to a general fund like that? It would seem unlikely. Again, the values of people could change, but it seems to me if people are going to put the hand in their own pocket, they're going to deal it. They're going to hand it out to people either known to them or they're going to give it out to some sort of fund which deals with a specific problem. Maybe there's um, maybe there's sort of very poor parents and the children have bad upbringing of their poor. Yeah, maybe you might get some subsidy for that, some sort of charitable organisation. Uh, that's entirely possible. But um, when there was lots of charitable giving, say, in the 19th century, um, they actually, in England, they then ended up having to get bodies that coordinated charitable giving because the, the, the charitable organisations realised that the people would go out in the begging bowl and then then when the other charity came around, hid it, the bowl which they, that they had begged with and would fill and to fill it with even more money. So those sorts of constraints would seem to exist. That's um, recorded in a very interesting book called The Welfare State We're In by James Bartholomew, which was printed probably about 20 years ago, maybe even longer now. Um, that's an interesting uh, book. So, yeah, whether the probability of getting a socially leftist non-state society seems unlikely. You may get sort of little communities on the side yeah they could be but they're unlikely to be mainstream they're going to be similar to the to some extent like the red light districts of cities for instance they're going to be on the margins they're going to do their thing they'll be left alone but they're hardly going to go mainstream it would seem very unlikely um, the question i think then is whether it would be economically leftist what would the income distribution be like um I think we discussed this before. I think it's probably going to be more equal, but it, I severely doubt it's going to end up like the position of of that Kevin Carson relates to, because some people like leading and some people follow, and it's even true of men, or well, very true of men. And to the extent you're a follower, you tend to get paid less than if you're a leader. Uh, and then, of course, there's IQ differentials as well. Um, so whilst it might be the case that being politically connected and be able to navigate. And I do think it's interesting uh, that people say technology increases 
IQ requirements, and so the it, it means it's more difficult for the non-cognitively blessed to to access a decent amount of resources. I I would say probably even more so the regulatory system requires you to be much more cognitively able to be able to navigate. Similarly, as well with the uh, healthcare system in in the UK, if you're well, you're articulate and you kind of know the system because you know people of similar economic status to you, so you can navigate it. The NHS is still not very good, but it's significantly better for somebody who's a bit stupid because they don't know how to work the system. Because systems, you need to know have inside information. You got to be quite articulate for them to take any notice of you. Um, so there are ways in which the regulatory state increases IQ requirements to having a decent stand, a decent level of income. Um, but it's still the case that there are going to be people who are going to earn more than other people. Um, so whether, so as I say, it's probably going to be less unequal than it is today. Is it going to be the sort of equalitarian paradise? I think no. Um, so those would be my broad thoughts on the issues. So I think you're essentially correct. So I, I there's like a decision tree that breaks down here. So you have to stop. Can you abolish the state? And if you answer that question, yes, then will a technology abolish? And you can answer that question. Yes, it will take the sort of Ted Kaczynski type line. And as well as the entrepreneurial state, which is someone like Ben Burgess likes to reference in debates over socialism versus capitalism here. Like if you think the state is the real driver of technological growth and you want to abolish that institution, okay, as well as maintainer, now, the question of maintenance of technology is a question which I didn't get into here. So it could be that the, the future anarchist society doesn't develop new technology. It just maintains the current uh, paradigm here. Um, that, that, could, that, that could be a possible future here. Um, but as you point out with the income stuff, I mean, this gets into the word voluntary here. Uh, you know, like <clears throat> who would contribute to that fund here? Who would work hard to contribute to a kind of fund which doesn't seem to benefit them or people like them here. Again, you could say that people change the way they think in the future here. Um, there could be a new man, um, but that, that seems to be relatively unlikely here. So if you if you can, if, if technology gets, if, if the state gets abolished and thereby technology gets abolished, then things just, you know, fall, then things just go back to the pre-industrial way of life. Uh, there are ways, certain ways, in which the pre-industrial things are "quote unquote" left wing, but not in the normal usage of words, and not particularly. And if you ask like feminists or like, you know, like if you ask people in, outside of this context, this a relatively obscure question, they're going to say the past is more trad. Whether that's true or not, again, is a is a sort of historical question here. But you could, but like if you look at like the way in which older people or just like really old people view their marriages here. A lot, there are a lot more, like, if you look at like my grandparents, for example, you know, like they're all dead now, but like they're, they're a lot more tr in certain ways trad than by the, the uses of those words than, than things like that. And the feminists would point this out in the normal context of, of, of debates here uh, over like modern versus historical marriages here. Uh, here, so so on those so so if the technology can be maintained, go back to the technology question here. You know that's the interesting question here, but this just turns into a procedural economic question, not necessarily an ideological question here, uh, because I do think a lot of the egalitarianism we have is dependent on the technology here. Um, so 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 I, I'll just hold that question to be somewhat agnostic on the answer to that question here. So let's just suppose technology does stay around or continue to innovate. The continue to innovate thing becomes a sort of a counterfactual problem. I mean, it could be space communism, you know, like, you know, this is kind of like a meme on like random dissident uh, Facebook forums. Maybe that, I mean, so like if you assume that tech, if you assume some sort of post-scarcity society, maybe that, maybe that just winds up to be the case that we get the sort of the society that, uh, Keith's critic Goofy Gillis once, or Kevin Carson once. Although Kevin Carson, I wouldn't call a space communist either. Um, so, so when I when I look at like Keith Preston's critics, 
as well as some of Keith Preston's friends like Paul Gottfried, they call him right wing. And I think they're right um, in the sense that if you abolish the modern schooling system, for example, which is one of the key elements of the modernity here, you're going to ch- like who who will what will people learn? I mean, and who will do their education now? For people who have like no parents, they they'll just be like you know they'll either fend for themselves, they'll be like feral children, or they'll be like sent to like you know the 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 the, the future for them is kind of bleak and all over the place. But for quote unquote everyone else, elites, the working class, you know. Uh, the 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 working poor, um, they're gonna send their schools to probably like religious schools. I mean, who's gonna who's gonna put up with children and educate them if you if you're not getting a thirty to forty year pension? I mean, as much as teachers and educators complain about being underpaid, they're probably not. And in that society, the education will be done as it always has been done, and it still in certain places is done. But like you know, the Catholic Church, random Protestant churches homeschooling. And so if you abolish all these, you know, mo- modern school system, again, people are just going to grow up differently. And people know that because people people are alarmed by the rise of homeschoolers in the way they think differently, um, um, in ways in which they don't think like people raised in the modern school system. Again, there are like Ivan Illich style left-wing critiques of the school system here. Um, and there are also, you can also make them at private schools, which are us, I mean, private in the sense that they, they're not funded through taxpayers. So there could be some leftover of that. There still could be people like that. Um, but under these scenarios, you might get more yeoman pr- pr- proprietor types. So maybe they are right. Like if you get rid of the education system, it'll change the way people think people will be more independent and so forth. But this goes back to more like an individualistic thing here. Like, you know, and <clears throat> I'm, I'm of the view that individualism is it might not be now this goes back to like whether left right is a useful paradigm i uh, i'm not sure again whether you could put that on the left or right category and i'm waffling somewhat here and this goes back to my first point but like certain forms of individualism strike me as right wing and i think keith's Preston's critics as well as kevin carson would say it you know like wanting to start a business i mean this is like the this is like why do men start businesses more often than women in general, historically, well, I think it's a kind of like you could, you know, you could almost say it's like a kind of egoism. This is where everyone's a bit of an Ayn Randian in the sense. So, like, who's going to start a business? Oh, I have an idea. I can make this restaurant work, or I can make this shop work, or I can be an electrician, my own electrician. This is not something a sheeple would do. This is this is kind of individualism, egoism here that is required here. So again, if you just think about the, um, maybe there's this new man that come about, and like they're all, you know complementarian and and like not competitive but again i'm suspicious what do you make of these comments here about swift and about let's just hold technology technology remain rough it is we're not going to talk about space communism we're not going to talk about a pre-industrial ted kaczynski environment but let's just hold technology where it is what do you think is the likelihood that if you abolish the modern managerial technocratic welfare state that yes that's a mouthful that as well as the schooling system people will become more "Quote unquote right wing in the normal way we think about things and starting businesses, starting families, and so forth. I, th- I imagine what would be your pushback and what would be your areas of agreement? I think well, just on the family formation is interesting to the extent that the if there's no um, non-state replacement for the welfare system, you will have a situation where." women are more concerned about the even more so than they are now of the earning potential of their husbands uh and assuming they do in fact get married um now you could argue that with technology then they can still be childless and so you could end up with a similar demographic situation uh at present although the problem with that is people would need to earn enough themselves to support themselves in um in retirement without um without their own children which is possible but the problem is if you have any investments stocks shares or whatever um then the 
profits are going to be made in the future would be dependent upon people working for them at the time to make the profits to pay you any dividends to keep you alive in your old age. Um, so I think that kind of demographic problem would still afflict such a society. Um, and uh, absent large levels of immigration. But uh, then you get to the question as to whether the anarchist society is going to be relatively open bordered or closed bordered. Uh, that's where it's sort of Keith Preston seems to be very much sort of right wing, and that's where his critics like. And it's interesting because Keith would consider himself sort of like a cultural leftist, really. Um, and Hendy is in certain respects, but I think his, criti uh, his um, critics are right that if he went through with his ideas, the results if, for most people in the society probably wouldn't be that sort of sort of like culturally leftist. Unless, of course, Keith thinks in, well, he may well just think it's an elite thing if you happen to be sort of the bohemian type. That's fine. You can do it. But for societal health, that needs to be left for a, a small number of people who can do it and they're left alone and everyone else just does their normal thing. Or maybe he thinks that's just what would result. I'm not sure. Um, but... Um, Oh, by the way, I'm not doing this to attack Keith Preston. No, or, no, no. Well, attack, attack him on an intellectual level, I am, but not on a, uh, you know, like no, 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 level. no, no, just, no, no, saying, no, I, I, no, I don't mean to do that at all. Uh, I just think just just, just the way, way his arguments um, lead. So, um, the, the, so, yes, I mean, with current technology would maybe be able to have more of a left to society, I mean, even if you were to try to keep replacement rate fertility. You could still do it and have women pregnant for a comparatively short period of time of their lives. Um, that would allow more sort of female quote unquote freedom. Um, but the fact that so um, so if it was the case that women could earn enough and then become pregnant and then support themselves during pregnancy. Um, that's may that might work. Um, but getting ad adequate resources to do that uh, early enough would seem to be minimal. So I think maybe you'd be able to have it in the short run. Um, I suppose my general point would be Reality will tend more right wings eventually, anyway. Um, so, I mean, as I say, maybe it, to the extent society is richer and to the extent that um, women are able to be financially independent and be able to support themselves through pregnancy. Uh, but again, though, I mean, it would seem odd that you would become. And I mean, the other thing is, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's possible. I think it's unlikely. Possible, yeah, possible but unlikely. That would be my view on the question of whether anarchism will lead to right wing or left wing scenarios here. If, if indeed the modern managerial state can be abolished, um, and holding the question on technology, what will happen if technology is or isn't maintained uh, to the current level? Here, because like you know, you get rid of birth control, you get rid of condoms, you get rid of, uh, you get rid of a lot of modern technology. Here, you just basically uh, left with a world in which is you know, again, these are the things that people say are a human right. By the way, abortions, birth control, and so forth, um, and that's paid for by the sort of modern managerial, technocratic state. Then there's conspiratorial reasons, and there's straightforward reasons why people want those things paid for. Again, I'm not saying they wouldn't exist necessarily. Um, or in some forms, they might exist, but how effective would they be, and so forth? So, so again, if you hold the state as the the and the modern, if you hold the state as the sort of driver of innovation, which I find on some level dubious, but there is a book that states that is the case. Um, if you hold that, then that's especially a problem on this sort of relatively obscure question of what would uh, what would an anarchist society look like here. Um, if you if you if you hold corporations like megacorps, you know, as a driver of in technology and the maintainer of in technology, then the megacorps will dominate. 
And if you get rid of the corporate managerial welfare state, again, all this DEI stuff that like, you know, forcing gas stations to hire uh, criminals, like, like if, if corporations are as ruthless as they say they are, as the left says they are, they wouldn't do that. Um, they wouldn't do that. And, you know, there was a, a Jacobin had a writer, Matt Brunig, and he has an article, which I always like to forward around, um, you know, you know, which is basically in defense of big business, businesses, why you should work, why business, big business. I'm not saying that's the exact title, but more or less his argument is that like, you know, workers in bigger businesses tend to get paid more than, you know, well, it's actually attacking small businesses. The workers in big businesses get paid more than ones in small businesses here, which is, you know, this is like, this is like a mind, I don't like to curse here, but uh, like a mind F here. It's like, you know, like this, this unravels a lot of things here about the petite bourgeois and the megacorps here uh, about, and who exploits whom here, just by reading this article here. So I think it's actually a well-argued argument here, but like, I, I don't think it's a surprise that, 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 you know, women have dominated certain levels of mega corporations. And these are the same mega corporations that Kevin Carson and Keith Preston don't like. You know, the Walmarts, the Nabiscos, the the you know, the the Microsofts and so forth here. Um so so again, if you hold that tech corporations the driver of technological change, that on that scenario, again, it's maybe here, but if you get rid of the hiring practices and you get rid of like the paternity leave and all these other education policies, I I I think I think the critics of people like Keith end up being correct. Um, so as far as as far as the last question here concerned, I think is defense question. So the defense question to me is also another way in which society will trend more right wing. You know, some people will show state societies like Sweden or even for that matter Qatar or like the like um, not Bahrain or like the peace most peaceful societies in the world. Well, I think first of all you have to think of them as American Empire protectors. Um, uh, so like they don't need military, you know, like, you know, if you're reasonably culturally sufficient, um, you know, so you don't turn into like El Salvador pre the current leader, um, you have no drug war, um, to, to be fair to, uh, you're, and you're reasonably culturally sufficient. There could be the case that if you have someone subsidize your national defense, you know, all you basically need to do, you also a kind of mono-ethnic society too or at least for now, um, it could be the case that you don't actually need that much violence to maintain your society from foreign, from foreign invasions, which I do think can happen, as well as you don't need much violence to maintain your society internally. Here, everyone just sort of gets along. You can walk on a subway at night without being harassed here. Um, walk on a subway at night here. It, it, he, I was watching a sports game recently. I won't tell you where, but... um, um. It was it was funny here. The, 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 of course, they have a a young woman as the on field reporter here, um, and the game was three hours away. The upcoming game, and she she stated that she did not want to take the train out of New York. Uh, uh, she did not take want to take the train out of New York because she because she was a she didn't, she didn't explain this explicitly here. Uh, but one of the male commentators say, well, yeah, you should instead of driving, you should just take the train here. Or she said, ugh. Um, so in a sense, maybe Dennis Prager's car, the Dennis Prager's in defense of the freedom of cars is right. So she's going to drive here. Um, so I, I, I find that kind of like a funny, uh, funny thing, because I don't know if you've read recent reports about New York, but there's a certain group that's been just uh, purposely harassing. I mean, this was an article that breaking points. Uh, everyone's conveniently quiet about this here. But but like um, this, this, this is like a long aside here. But there is just a way in which certain societies, if you get rid of violence, it could be the case. But you have to ask the question, why are those silent societies so violent-free? You know, uh, like, uh, and that's that's a question which I just don't think people think about. And the only people who think about it are verboten, verboten, or publicly verboten people, or people who are ver publicly verboten adjacent, like you and I, or, or at least or read them or think about them here. So you have to think about, like, why... Or society is both internally and externally peaceful enough that you can actually just operate the way in which in certain areas you operate. Because like Singapore, you might be able to walk around and take the subways. But as like good left-wing anarchists know, Singapore is a very has a very brutal 
punishment system here. Same way with Hong Kong, same way with Tokyo. Don't I wouldn't want to be in a J Japanese prison here. Um, I mean, they're in some ways more right wing than any British, Swedish, American, or Canadian prison here. Um, um, so again, you could talk about like what to do about crime and maybe punishment is out there. And as far as defense is concerned, you you could blame all defense problems on like the American Empire. Um, but if you look before the American Empire, you had other empires. I mean, this goes into the defense rabbit hole. I do agree with Todd Lewis, for example, that like there could be defenses that you cannot like on some level. It's just not worth defending yourself. You know, I mean, this is what David Friedman would bring out here. But 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 whatever defense you do decide to do, you're going to need males who have weapons. You know, everyone in 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 Switzerland has a, an assault rifle here. I like I ever you know like you're going to need a kind of militia or you need a professional force. Uh, again, with technology, women can play a role, and like maybe not in hand to hand like UFC style front line c combat. Um, but again, all these areas in which you know police work. Military work. These are areas which are "quote unquote" um, right wing by the normal usage of words, and the only way you get out of these is kind of a ball. Is is kind of like thinking about a new man developing here, which is a point I keep repeating here. So, just within internal and external peacekeeping, we'll say, like I'll use the utter the word peacekeeping here or maintaining peace, assuming there is threats to that order. Who's going to maintain it? And it seems like in an anarchist society, this just makes it more "quote unquote" trad or "quote unquote" right wing. What do you make of this argument, Swithin? Yeah, I unless you have um, an army funded by um, the, the um, taxation or whatever, um, you're likely to get. I mean, we discussed before uh, to have a, a sustainable anarchist society, you're going to need to a large extent a volunteer militia, which would be male. Um, so it's it's going to be more militia based like that, and so uh, it's going to be more culturally right wing. So I think really the the I think the real argument is when it comes to whether anarchism is left wing or right wing, is really is it going to be more is you are you going to have a, a relatively large amount of in income inequality or a relatively low level of income inequality? But that's really going to be the major um, distinction between them. Uh, the the probability of cultural leftism is going to be um, minimal in the extreme, uh, and, and so, I, so I think that's that's what we're going to kind of come down to. Is is the anarchist society going to be something more like I envisage, or something more like Todd Lewis envisages? That I think is really what would be the result. Um, the leftism that you could have at the present is a result of technology, the modern managerial state, and having the welfare system and um, anti-discrimination stuff, and actually basically lots of force to prevent natural segregation, as it were, or separation, maybe a better, less, more neutral term. Um, and I'd just like to thank everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to us on Podbean and on YouTube. The more subscribers we get, we higher get in the search rankings and more people can access this material. And if you'd like to contact the show for any reason at all, please contact us at mindcryinglibertyshow at gmail.com. That's mindcryinglibertyshow at gmail.com. <laughs>